Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we're going to hopefully finish up with this Amstrad CPC 6128. We started last time and we figured out that it seems to be working but we're getting no video out. Today we're hopefully going to figure out what's going on, fix it up and leave it as new. So let's get to work. Previously on Noel's Retro Lab. Two things that are wrong already. The switch needs to be cleaned up but we're getting no video out whatsoever. The Z80 seems to be active. Let's see if there's something in the data bus. They're a little ugly, but I mean, you, you definitely see low levels and high levels. So yeah, it's, it's probably fine. We've managed to eliminate the Z80 and the Gatorade as potentially faulty. So the problem must be somewhere else. And now the conclusion. One thing we can do is put in a test run. I haven't done that before because usually if you don't have any video, then you know, put in a test ROM is not really going to tell you that much. So this could be a case that the ROM is defective. And if the ROM is defective, the computer starts up and it's just getting garbage from there. And that might explain what we're seeing. Certainly no video and kind of a little weird activity in the bus, yet the CPU and the Git Array are fine. So to do that, we can put the test program in an external ROM that uh, connects to the expansion board. However, you can probably see that the expansion board, it's kind of dirty. So we really should give it a good clean before we do that. And we might as well go ahead and do it the other ones as well. How do we do that? We just need to have a very gentle abrasive to remove some of the dust and oxidation in there. And a good tip is an ink eraser. So with an ink eraser, we can apply it here, which is just has just, oh, I'm doing it with the wrong end, with this kind. That's enough of an abrasive to get rid of the um, oxidation and not really take too much metal away. And it also gives us pretty good control over where we're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in all of them. That's much better. Underneath, we usually don't have to do much. We should just look at it, but uh, we can give it a quick pass. Underneath is facing down, so it usually doesn't collect the dust and it doesn't get nearly as corroded. Okay, much better. And then we should clean up the residue from using the eraser with some alcohol. It doesn't come out very dirty at all. We'll do it on the underside as well. Okay, perfect. So now we can finally go ahead and use the test ROM. Here I have a device that I can plug in and it will run that diagnostic ROM over the internal ROM. So all I have to do is plug it in on the expansion port and hold this button while the computer is being turned on. Let's see if we get anything. We still get nothing. And with just the regular ROM in here, we also don't see any output. Okay, at this point, everything seems to be working correctly, everything that we've checked so far. So that's rather puzzling. So maybe everything works fine and it's just that we are not getting any video out. And if so, they could be a bad CRT controller. So we have a couple easy ways to test that. We can turn on the computer. It should be running the basic interpreter and we can press the delete key and that should give us a beep because there's nothing to delete. Another test that we can do in case the ROM is not working correctly, which we don't know if it's working correctly or not yet. We can put in this ROM pack and press one, which will run one of the games that I know has music right away. For that, we need to have everything plugged in. We need to have the keyboard ribbon plugged in, the um, speaker cable, and we can't forget, we also have to have the volume wheel um, connected correctly. Otherwise, it will be an open circuit in the sound and we won't hear anything. And as a matter of fact, we should do that and then we should put the wheel somewhere in the middle since I don't know which one is the maximum volume. I'm going to turn this on, all right, and press the delete key and we get nothing. Okay. Let's try 
plug in the pin. Okay, it's in securely. This time we can turn it on without pressing any buttons. It will just go to that main menu. Okay, now if I press one, it will run the game, but again, we don't hear anything. So with that, we know there is something more than just not getting any video out. This is not working correctly. So I'm still thinking that there's something wrong with the video output. It's possible that if the CRT controller is faulty, it may be halting the system or it may be somehow blocking the gate array from doing some other function. We can check to see if the CRT controller seems to be working correct. One of the things we can check is whether it's correctly generating the vertical sync and the horizontal sync signals. And the vertical sync, it's in pin 40, so that should be right over here. And we get nothing. We get a, a high, constantly high, so that's clearly incorrect. And the horizontal one should be here, 39, and we also are getting nothing that is very suspicious. The CRTC also gets a clock signal, so let's make sure it's getting that. That's coming from in 21, that's right here. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, it's at one megahertz, you can see that right there. Uh, that's correct, that's exactly what it's supposed to be running at, but is not generating vertical sync or horizontal sync. Let's try some of the other things that it needs to gener be generated. So the CRTC is going to be generating addresses. They go through this logic over here, and it's pretty much generating addresses so that the gate array reads the contents of specific parts of the screen, and then the gate array generates the RGB value, which then gets converted into a video signal. Pins six and seven should be one of the addresses. So this is six, get nothing. Seven, we get nothing. 16 and 17, 16, nothing. So, so it, the, the, the CRT controller looks to be dead completely. I mean, I don't see any output whatsoever. Uh, no vertical sync, no horizontal sync, no addresses. It's probably a good idea to try and replace this and see if things improve. Here we are. So we are going to desolder that one, put a socket, and then try with a different CRT controller. So this one. And here we grab the essential tool for this kind of thing. And here we go. See how it is. Uh, pretty good. May have to touch up a couple of them, but it looks pretty reasonable. So before we try to pull the chip out, one thing I'd like to do is to use the soldering iron without any solder in it and just check that every pin is loose. And if not, give it a little touch up. And also I line them a little bit more towards the middle. So if we do this right, this one, and that one needs a little fixing up. The other ones are good. If we do this right, the chip should come out almost by itself. Yeah, none of them seem to be stuck. Let's try it. I like to do it with this tool again, just very gently. Oh, look, yeah, it's moving by itself. This plus the soldering. Oh, sometimes you don't even need the soldering iron, it just came right out. Oh, maybe we need. We go right out very nice okay so this is clean enough that i think the socket will go right in without any problems if not we'd pass a desoldering braid but i think just doing this 
There you go. Tight fit. Perfect. Now let's solder it. Okay, let's have a look. Seem okay. A little difficult to do with the camera. Now, some flux residue in there. I usually like to clean it off like this. Put some alcohol in there. Scrub it well. And then that mostly smears it, so now I put a just a rag and I absorb that along with the alcohol. And it's much better. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, this is the CRT controller that we pulled out. And here's one, a spare one that I had. I don't think I've tested it, but hopefully it works. Even if we get no image, we know that we were not getting VSync out of this or we're, we're not getting any of the addresses that it was generating. So it will be interesting to see what happens um, even if we're getting no image uh, with this change. So pop that in. And again, just to keep things as consistent as possible, I'm going to try it with the test ROM first. So press the button, turn it on, and how about that? There we go. It seems to be working. So that's not a very exciting screen. That is the test ROM screen, and the green around the borders just tells us that the memory test is passing. So that's great. Let's try it now without this just with the basic. There we go. It seems to be working. I mean, we still need to test the keyboard and a few other things, but the board now is working. It, all I had was a bad CRT controller that somehow was interfering probably with the operation of the gate array, and it was just locking things up and not allowing it to execute things properly. So we managed to fix this Amstrad CPC 6128 board for a while, that was touch and go. I, I started getting, getting a little nervous once we realized it was not the Z80, it was not the Gator Ray, the buses looked fine. It ended up being a pretty unusual fault. It's the CRTCs sometimes fail, but they're relatively unusual. And especially it was unusual that it locked up the rest of the system. So it, it was interesting. So next time, what we're gonna do is finish up with this Amstrad and we're gonna clean it up, give it a good scrubbing, make sure the keyboard works. Uh, we'll probably have to take the whole keyboard apart and pretty much leave it brand new. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Until the next video, see you then.